Anthony. I'm working at the Cogworks. Today I'm going to be presenting a method for unit testing an Embraco website during development. So um, basically I'm just going to be showing you things that you can possibly test, things that you should consider when you're developing in Embraco. Uh, I'm going to show you the challenges that you normally would face when trying to unit test in Embraco, and I'm going to give you an example using MockQ. <coughs> so, what can we actually test? We can test content retrieval. We can test the controllers in MVC. We can, we should, and can test business logic in isolation. And you can test your front end. I'm not going to talk about front end really because this is more about Embraco than front end stuff. Okay, so content. Um, if you're like us, then uh, you like to store... What the... No, I don't want to change my performance. Yes. Which one? Which one do I want? That one? Okay. <laughs> Microsoft, very helpful. Okay, so if you're like us, then you like to store various values in your tree. So in this case, in this example, I've got a config folder with analytics and SEO settings, and we also got uh, panels and carousel items in various folders in the tree. So searching for that content, making sure that you get the correct values out of the correct node is something that you could consider testing. And of course, you want to test your controllers. Uh, specifically, when you write an MVC controller, you want to test things like is the controller calling my correct service method based on the logic in the controller? Am I setting a cookie? Am I setting temp data? And also, which action result am I actually returning? So you may return something like current page when there's a failure, or you may redirect to another Embraco page. So you can actually test things like that. And of course, you need to test your logic. So when developing websites these days, we normally have a service layer which will either talk to a custom database or talk to Embraco directly. And we've abstracted that away and you can talk, you can test your business logic in isolation. Um, so this is just to show you that when you're developing Embraco, you should consider front end. Um, what we do is we, we have a spider test which spiders the entire website looking for Y sods, and it uses uh, Selenium to do that. But if you want to get more granular with Selenium, then you can. You can program it to test whether a div is showing on the screen or not. Anyway, so uh, challenges when trying to unit test in Embraco. Uh, Embraco has a lot of static methods get dictionary item, get content, uh, get dictionary item in the old. API. It, it has a lot of newing. So the, in v4 there was dynamic node and document. That's how you get uh, get some content. And uh, there's a lot of singletons as well. Uh, with creating content, you've got a similar issue. There's a, in the old API you had a static document.make new, and you've still got the singletons uh, around in um, v6. And of course, the good old uh, HTTP context, which everyone complains about, and everyone says, well, you know, I can't unit test my Embraco website because Embraco has a reliance on the HTTP context. And because I don't have a context in the, um, in the unit test, I can't unit test. That's the general uh, complaint. So uh, what, what is the solution to all of this? The solution is wrappers. Um, so, <laughs> uh, basically, you, you can't mock anything in Embraco, really. Uh, you can't mock the HTTP context in the way that Embraco uses it. You can't, mock, um, you can't mock any of the static methods. You can't mock the singletons. So, basically, the, your best option is to wrap everything. So, wrap and abstract is what we do. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about testable code. Um, so a lot of people want to write, te uh, write unit tests, but what they don't realize is 
you have to write code that is testable, not write tests for your code. And as part of that, um, the TDD crowd, uh, does anyone do TDD in the audience? One, two, three, okay. So as part of that, the TDD crowd will say, well, you know, you should use your tests to, uh, to help you develop better code, not, not to try to test code that's written. And, uh, and as part of that, you need to use design patterns uh, and you need to uh, abstract away your dependencies where possible. And, um, and you should code to interfaces. You'll notice a lot these days uh, that Umbraco has a lot of interfaces, a lot of eyes around everywhere. That, it's for that reason. They want to make things testable. So why code to an interface? Well, it allows replacement. So in our case, uh, well, if you want to use a different service that, provi that provides the same interface, you can. It it's, uh, separates your concerns as well. So you can pass around your interfaces or your, your objects that implement these in interfaces and not care about what's actually happening underneath. And it allows you to test in isolation so you can test a service by itself because you can mock away its dependencies because its dependencies rely on an interface and um, yep, and allows you to mock away everything. Yeah, yeah, that's what I just said. Okay. Um, so uh, introducing MockU. So MockU is a great little uh, mocking library and Braco is using it in the core right now. Uh, it lets you easily, easily mock away standard dependencies. So in this example, um, I've got a HTTP context base and it's really quite simple. All I'm doing is new mock and it's going to be of type HTTP context based. And the second line is, it just means when I do a dot items, return me this new dictionary. And that can be anything, that's just my return value. So anytime I do HTTP context dot items, just return that. And if I have a method that has the, uh, the HTTP context injected into it, then all I do is that. And then I can use that parameter exactly the same way that I use the HTTP context normally, except I don't grab it out of thin air. So I'm, I'm injecting this dependency into the method. So um, my approach to Umbraco these days is to abstract standard operations. So, uh, so things like setting values, getting published content, getting content that you would normally get using either the document API or the content service, and also get dictionary items. Um, what I'm going to show you now is more applicable to v4 than to v6 because v6 passes around um, interfaces, but, uh, but you can do it for v6 as well. So the wrap up, it's quite, quite simple. Uh, you've all probably done this before. The first method is just getting the, getting the current node using dynamic nodes. So you're using the newing stuff and you're just getting the value. Pretty simple, same deal with the document API. And the last one is just setting a value. So you get the document, then you set the value and then you publish. Really, really simple stuff. You do this for every single project except now it's in a wrapper and it's also implementing this interface which just has those methods. And if you wanted to do this in v6 then you would just pass in the iContent service, same deal, nothing really special. So um, on to some code examples. Um, so I'm going to give two examples. The first one is testing business logic of a page counter. So this is something that we actually did this week. Um, luckily, uh, <laughs> I wrote this code this week. Uh, so basically, we're storing a counter in Umbraco on pages. So every time the page gets visit visited, the counter gets incremented. Pretty straightforward. And the second example is testing an MVC controller. And in that example, I'm going to test uh, the fact that a web service was called and uh, I'm going to show you that you can mock away temp data, uh, cookies, and also test what action was returned, whether you were returning a specific page or not. Okay, so uh, example one. Um, so 
Um, in this example, I've just written a service which has get page views and increment page views. Really, really simple. Um, first, uh, firstly, get page views will take an Embraco wrapper, which just has the getters and setters, and it will just call get value. And then it will uh, try to parse that value. If there is a value, then just parse it. If there isn't, return zero as a default. So there's, that's some logic right there that we're going to test. And the increment page values is pretty straightforward. Get the page value, uh, get the page views, increment it, and then set the value. And this is all using the injected wrapper up here. And uh, how you run this, well, in this specific project, we were using master pages uh, because it was a legacy project. So pretty straightforward. Create your service, create your wrapper, call the method. Three lines, very simple. Now, so onto the tests. Does anyone remember the crash test dummies by any chance? Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to test that. Uh, the value was expected, the methods were called, and I'm going to test the logic of that if statement. So, uh, a setup in uh, MockU. Uh, so in this example, we're using nUnit and MockU. Pretty straightforward. In the setup method, I'm just creating my service, which I'm going to test, and then I'm mocking away my Embraco wrapper. Really, really simple. And in the test method, I've just got some default values up here. And all this first line does is when I call get value on the wrapper, I want to return this expected result. And the expected result in this case is going to be 7. And then I'm just going to run that method and then verify that the method was uh, run that method in the service, but then I'm going to verify that the method in the wrapper was called and also verify that the result was expected. So in this scenario, if some coder came along and accidentally deleted the get value call to the wrapper in that service method, you would know by this unit test. Okay, and this method tests the logic of the uh, of getting the page views. So if the property value is an empty string, which sometimes it is in Umbraco, you when you create a new property, uh, it's not going to have a value straight away. So if it's an empty string, just return zero. And just like the example before, it's pretty straightforward. And then incrementing a page. This is a little bit more complicated because I need to mock not only the get value, but the set value. But it's pretty much the same thing. Really, really simple. OK, on to the second example. So in this example, we're talking about MVC controllers. I'm going to test the web service login. Oh, I'm going to actually uh, call to the test. Call to the web service login. I'm going to test that the cookie was set, the temp data was set, and also the action result was expected. So uh, in this case, we're going to use property injection. So these are just, this is not necessarily the best way to do it, so don't shoot me. Um, but uh, I've got, just got some public properties, which is the account service, uh, the Embraco service, the cookies collection, and the temp data. And you've got a default constructor which does nothing, and then a, uh, sorry, yes, default constructor which sets the defaults, and then the other constructor which does nothing, and I'll get to that in a second. So when we're, so this controller is all about logging in, and in this scenario, what we had to do was we had to log in to using an external web service and it was an old school web SOAP web service. So um, all we did was, as you do normally, is check to see if the model state is correct, uh, set some temp data, and then redirect. Um, if, if it is correct, then do a web service call, which is this line here, and close the service, uh, cl close the connection, sorry. And then uh, if the response was logged in, so that's just a boolean, set a cookie. Otherwise, redirect, or set temp data and redirect to the current page. So um, not much fancy stuff going on there. And this is just the uh, set cookie method. Pretty simple, just set cookie. Okay, so onto the tests. 
Um, so that's what we're going to test. And this one is going to be a bit more complicated because we have to uh, actually mock away the Embraco context. So um, in this case, the Embraco context, I, I found this on GitHub. I cannot remember what the URL was or who wrote it. Um, but if, if you want to get the code from me, just email me and I'll send you the context. But basically, this is just an Embraco context. I, you just trust that it lets Embraco work for your unit test. Um, anyway, so uh, pretty straightforward. All I'm doing is setting up some, uh, some values for returning URLs and uh, also the temp data. So the, but the only mock that I've got here is actually uh, the Embraco service and my, uh, my account service. Everything else is actually not using MockQ. Uh, so this is just a helper that I wrote for this test. So all it's doing is setting up some return values for the SOAP service and then injecting the properties into the controller so you can use them later. Okay, so the test is uh, straightforward. So this is just calling that, uh, that helper method. Uh, so uh, call the method and then verify whether the action was null or not, uh, whether the action result was the URL that you expected, and verify that the cookie was set. Pretty straightforward. Um, there, there was another test for temp data, but that, the temp data test was for a redirect to the current page, but I'm not going to show that here because this pretty much uh, is everything that, everything was pretty much the same anyway. Okay, um, so some final thoughts about uh, about testing in Embraco. Um, when you're doing this, you have to rely on dependency injection, and learning dependency injection can be quite difficult. It's basically tipping your tipping your coding style on its head. Um, it's a really steep learning curve at first. Uh, I know this from experience, uh, but it's it, it's definitely worth it because it means that your code is going to be much much more testable, and um, and ultimately uh, more stable. Um, just to, just quickly about inversion of control containers, I don't really use them that much. Um, these are some quite popular ones: Autofac, NuGet, and um, not NuGet, in, Ninject, and Structure Map. Um, they reduce the necessity to inject things into your constructors and into your um, into your methods. Um, they're arguably not always useful, but I definitely can see the use for them. I haven't used them here in this example though, um, but uh, yeah. Uh, so static methods are hard to mock, singletons are hard to mock, and uh, you should always try to abstract away your dependencies to make your code easier to test. So in this scenario, we've abstracted Embraco away completely because we've just written the wrapper. So uh, just some final thoughts about testing. Your tests should be simple. Uh, if it's hard to test, then you're probably writing your code wrong. Uh, it's um, it's better to write uh, tests that force you to write good code, not write some code and then try to test it. Um, and your tests should be useful. There's no point testing getters and setters. Uh, it just it just gets something. You really want to be testing functionality, not methods. Um, so uh, using your tests to help you ar architect is a good thing. Uh, anyone doing TDD will tell you that. Um, TDD is also a very steep learning curve. Uh, I'm still struggling sometimes. I think the, the biggest struggle is actually writing your tests, uh, forcing yourself to write tests instead of just coding. Um, and like I said before, uh, you should be testing functionality. There's no point testing methods because if your functionality relies on three methods, then you want to change one of those methods or refactor one of them out because they're too large, then it changes the unit test, well, it breaks the unit test for that method. So you're better off testing a public method which does some functionality than to try to test all of your sub methods in your class. Okay, uh, so just to summarize, uh, I talked about what you can test, uh, I talked about some considerations, showed you some challenges in Umbraco, and uh, presented a wrapper which is just one method for doing it. It's uh, not necessarily the best method, but it's 
the one that I came up with, and uh, showed you how to do it using Mocu. Any questions? Yep. Uh, the question was, what other approaches are there aside from wrappers? Um, don't know, to be honest. Um, Aaron Powell came up with an MVP uh, integration of Umbraco 4 a few years ago, but that was way over my head. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, for me, uh, wrapping and abstracting away is the best solution. It simplifies everything. Um, the downsides to it. Um, I guess the one downside is that uh, the wrapper is not always, well, the, the wrapper might not be very uh, rigid. So, where is, where is my wrapper? So, here's, so even though the wrapper is three lines, if someone comes along and changes something, then the wrapper is broken. <clears throat> so, so I can't test my wrapper. That's the, I guess that's the only downside. But I know that uh, through experience, these are the three lines that I need. And I hope to God that no one changes them ever. And that's a, that's a fixed library that will be used. And then everything from there on can be abstracted. Anything else? Yeah. Um, is it is it uh, showing how you can like kind of make this stuff? Um, it just goes back to the image of the stuff. Yep. Uh, okay. So where are we? Okay. So um. So basically, instead of grabbing temp data and the HTTP cookies out of uh, out of thin air, out of the static HTTP context dot current dot whatever, all I'm doing is um, Defining some properties, and in the default constructor, um, using the current, uh, using the standard way that you do it, but then using the unit test, injecting them because they're public properties. The one other way you could do it is put them into the constructor, but then arguably that's uh, there's downsides to this. I mean, obviously you don't want every property to be um, to be public, but then you also don't want your constructor to be 15 parameters long. So it's it's give and take really. Um, in any case, uh, so which which part did you? No, I, I kind of didn't understand the question. Okay, cool. Anyone else? Okay. Oh, one more. Yep. Which one? Would it, the question was, was it, would it be easier if Embraco already had dependency injection? Um, well, it, in V6, there, uh, there's a lot of interfaces that are passed around. So <clears throat> in my, where are we? Where are you? Okay. So, um, so in this scenario, uh, it's the same wrapper, but it, I'm passing in the iContent service. So that's... Um, that's actually a singleton, but because the singleton is implementing this interface, I can just pass it around. I don't necessarily need to have my wrapper in this scenario, but uh, it's just nice to be able to say set value and then know that it works rather than having to do the same three lines for every serv for service method that I write. Um, so uh, V6 has dependency injection all over the place, so the APIs are great compared to V4. Yep. Um, so the question was, don't I, do you need to know something about the functionality of the thing that you're trying to mock using mock you? Uh, sort of. Uh, where's my example? Uh, where's my? Where's my? Okay. So uh, so yes, uh, but you only need to mock what you're going to use. So in this case here, I I need a HTTP context, and I'm going to use the items collection. And in this case, the items collection is a dictionary of, dic of string 
object. So all I need to do is return whatever I want for that object because I'm only going to use this. The HDB context has a bajillion properties and you don't need to mock all of them, you just need to mock the one or two that you actually use. And I know that this is a dictionary, so that's all I need to know. Any more questions? Nope. Okay. Thank you.